Good morning, everyone. Lovely to see you all this morning, folks, for our family service. Hopefully, you all have an order of service. Uh, everything you need will be on that. This is the third Sunday of Advent as well, and we're wearing ever closer, of course, towards Christmas. Just some announcements before we go any further together. Uh, just to highlight on the back of your order of service, you'll find uh, the vast majority of those for the week or so ahead. You're very welcome to return this evening. We have another service here at 6.30 uh, in the hall, and that's our junior Carl service, and everyone's very welcome to come back for that. Uh, a lot of our children uh, will be leading that. And there's also uh, Sunday school prizes this evening too. Uh, so we'd love to see you all back if you're available at 6.30 this evening. Collection this evening is for blind children in Bible lands. Tomorrow evening, all been well and weather permitting, uh, we have our community carol singing. Uh, do meet here hopefully around 6.30 to 6.45. Uh, we need as many children as possible uh, who'd like to come along and sing for us uh, around the community. Uh, alongside that, we do need drivers uh, and or cars as well. Please, folks, if you're available, come along for the evening. It's good to resurrect this after the, uh, the COVID period when we weren't allowed to do it. And uh, there will be consent forms for all uh, young people and children to be signed by either a parent or a guardian. We can't let the young person go until that is done. So they'll be available here uh, in the porch tomorrow evening. Last Bible study before Christmas is on Tuesday evening, and that's in the minor hall at 7.30 p.m. And our Advent services continue on Wednesday evening at 7.30 p.m. again in the minor hall. Love to see as many as possible along to those as well. Thanks. Sunday School are having their Christmas party. Uh, that's next Saturday here in the hall from 3 in the afternoon to 4.30. And I know the Sunday School have been getting that out over these last few weeks. So it's available for all the Sunday School kids from 3 to 4.30 next uh, Saturday afternoon. Also, uh, our nine Carl's or, I'm sorry, our nine lessons in Carl's services next Sunday evening uh, at 6.30 p.m. Love to see everybody along to that uh, very popular service. That's next Sunday evening at 6.30 uh, p.m. Confirmation, you see the little note for that on the back of the order of service as well. Uh, running out of time, anybody still wanting to be confirmed uh, next year, let me know uh, before Christmas, please. I'll not be announcing it after that. Thank you. Also, can I give a huge thanks to everybody involved yesterday in our senior citizens' dinner. Uh, it was a great afternoon. Lovely to see so many people partaking of it here uh, yesterday afternoon. And many thanks to Sandra and all her team. I know there were many people involved with it, and it went off very well. So thank you, one and all, and all who provided for it too. There are several ambassador magazines out in the porch. Uh, if you'd like to uh, take one, you're welcome as a tester. Uh, they are something you subscribe to, but these ones uh, certainly take, if you're interested as a tester and see how you go, is something you might like to do uh, on uh, a more regular basis as they are uh, produced from uh, Arma every couple of months or so. Also today, folks, uh, we'll be exiting through one door. That's for everybody. And it will be the main doors here, out to my left here, and out through the double doors at the front. So if you can all uh, go out that door, thank you. The Lord be with you. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins to intercede for us in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us then confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace. We confess together, Almighty God, 
Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought and word and deed, and in what we have left undone. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may walk in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We stand to sing our first hymn, O Little Town of Bethlehem. <laughs> Of the God of Jacob for their help, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who gives justice to those that suffer wrong, the Lord looses those that are bound, the Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord watches over the stranger in the land. He upholds the orphan and widow. The Lord shall reign forever. Now 
Clare will bring us our New Testament reading. The reading is taken from James chapter 5, verses 7 to 10. Be patient, therefore, beloved, until the coming of the Lord. The farmer waits for the precious crop from the earth, being patient with it until it receives the early and the late rains. You must also be patient. Strengthen your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is near. Beloved, do not grumble against one another, so that you may not be judged. See, the judge is standing at the doors. As an example of suffering and patience, beloved, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Thank you very much, Claire. Just before we sing our children's song, I'm going to ask, are there any birthdays in church in December today? Anybody born in December? <laughs> Anybody admitting to it or owning up? I do know a couple of folks who are present with us in December. Okay, well, we're going to sing happy birthday, uh, the first verse of that, for everybody who has a birthday in December, or someone uh, you might know. Anybody in Corvan? Anybody in December, guys? Yeah. Claire. Ah, Claire. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Everybody's pointing at each other there. <laughs> well, we'll start to sing a uh, verse of happy birthday. Thanks, Mark. Now we're going to stand and sing the children's song, Jesus Strong and Kind. But do note, folks, on the order of service, the children are going to lead us in the first two verses, and then the very last line is left to the children again. And that includes children down on the floor. Not just the kids up on stage here, but all of you down on the floor. So Jesus Strong and Kind. Please stand.
Please be seated. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence with us this morning. We ask now, Lord, as we look at your word, that you will speak to us through it. Help us to hear your voice and only your voice, and help us respond to you in the power of the Holy Spirit, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Folks, if I was to say to you this morning the word patience, patience, what does it uh, drum up in your mind? Patience. Now, I'm going to ask, as we do on these occasions, uh, Chris has a few e slides for us. Chris, are you want to throw up the first one for us? Patience. Now, of course, there are two words of patience in the English language. The first one is this one, a patient in a hospital bed. Not the sort of place you want to be, or certainly not often anyway. Patient or patients in a hospital bed. And of course, there's the other one, which is a state of mind or a state of character, a state of personality, or an attribute that is part of our being. Patience. Now, I'm asking this morning, folks, what is your patience like? What is your patience? Are you a patient person? Are you someone who can put up with absolute loads of stuff before you lose it, before you blow your top? Who's very patient? Who would say there's a patient? And remember now, if somebody knows and loves you present, be very careful. Who's a patient person? Who would say, nobody, nobody at all, I'm a Corban. Folks, anybody patient? Christine's nodding very heavily, and, and Christine as well. Both Christines are nodding very heavily. Hear that, George? A very patient lady up here. <laughs> I'm sure we all have little links of patience in our lives. I'd like to think we all have patience of some kind uh, in our lives. But you know, it's not always down to personality or character all the time. You know, we can be a very cool, easygoing character, but actually have very little patience in certain things. What could you could be patient in, somebody beside you will feel very impatient in, and vice versa. Certain things knock us off quicker than somebody else beside us might have the problem with. In other words, we could get angry very quick or we could lose our interest or, or our patience in something very quickly, or somebody beside us might go along a lot easier, a lot longer with that same thing. And look at this poor cat here on the screen. I've had my patience tested. I'm negative. <laughs> I'm negative. He looks very grumpy, doesn't he? I'm sure nobody in church this morning is grumpy. Well, hopefully you're not anyway. Okay, well, let's look at this word patience from our reading today that Claire brought for us. It's mentioned several times, four or five times in as many verses, and starts off in verse 7. Be patient, therefore, beloved, until the coming of the Lord. Be patient, therefore, until the coming of the Lord. We're in Advent season. An Advent's about the coming of Jesus, and we give thanks at Christmas for that. But he's going to come back one day again too. And are we ready for that? Are we ready to receive him if he comes back in our lifetime? If he comes back before even the service is over today? Nobody knows when he'll be back, but are we ready? And that involves being patient for his return too. If we're Christians, we should be wanting him to come back. The sooner the better. I hope that is your mindset and your heart. We want Jesus to come back as soon as possible. But the word tells us to be patient, to be waiting, and to be caught in service for him when he returns. Chris, if you just show the next slide, please. Okay, now here's a creature that has, I'm afraid, he has to have patience in life, no matter what uh, might be going on inside. The wee snail, the humble snail, one of the slowest creatures around. But he gets there, and he gets done what he needs to do. And you can imagine, if he understands what patience is, he's something or a creature that has abundant loads of it. 
Now, it doesn't mean that we have to go along at a snail's pace in life, but the Bible's very good at showing us different creatures and what we can learn from them. We hear about the ant to be busy in life like the ant is. And we can learn from the snail as well in his patience. Busy, yet patient. And you can marry the two of them together. We need to be busy for the Lord as we await his return and to be patient in that. But our heart at the same time should be desiring his return. And then, Chris, the next one, please. Okay, you ever caught in one of these? Who's good in one of these? <laughs> the queue. Oh, dear, the queue. At Christmas time, we have loads of queues, haven't we? No matter where you go, if you're heading out for something at Christmas time, you're running to a queue. You may be going for a night out somewhere. Maybe it's a, a theater or some show. There'll be a queue to get into it. You'll probably be in a traffic jam before you get there. And so you're queuing again. You've ordered your turkey and you're waiting in a queue to get it, particularly on Christmas Eve if you're lining up with everybody else. And there are queues in life. It's part of getting used to. But how patient are you in a queue? And it might be to do with something saying to yourself, well, I haven't time for this. I have another appointment. I can't wait in this queue. Or even if you're in one and have time, how patient are you in a queue? They're very testing for us. And finally, Chris, just the last slide, if that's okay. Patience is a virtue. Have you ever heard of that saying? Patience is a virtue. What's a virtue? Anybody know what a virtue is? No? Nobody know what a virtue is? I suppose in, in uh, the easiest language to describe it, it's something that you want in your life, something that you uh, want to adapt to, to acclimatize to, something that is part and parcel within a person, part of their being, part of their personality, part of their character. A virtuous person, you've probably heard of that, and it usually ascertains to the things of God. So patience is part of the Lord. It's part of his being, and he wants us to have that in our lives too. So whenever we get impatient in life, we should say sorry to God. Thank him for giving us patience in many things, but when we're impatient and we can't wait and we get so rattled and angry, and annoyed we have to hand it over to the Lord to forgive us because impatience believe it or not folks is a form of sin I have thought of it like that before it is a form of sin it's not part of what God wants for us in our ongoing growing in the Lord patience should be something that becomes more and more evident in our lives and here in James if you ever read James' as we letter there's a great wee book. There's a lot of stuff in it that's really challenging. Strengthen your hearts for the coming of the Lord is near. You also must be patient. It's not an option. We must be patient. And look at verse 9. There's a challenge for us, folks. Don't grumble against one another because when we do that, we're impatient with each other. When do we start to get a wee bit annoyed at each other? We're losing our patience with each other. And it isn't right. Beloved, do not grumble against one another. And that's even behind somebody's back. As well as to their face. Don't grumble against another person. Just look at the outcome. So you mightn't be judged. Because the judge is standing at the doors. He will return one day soon. And as an example of suffering and patience, verse 10, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord, and they were certainly examples of both suffering and patience. And the two can go hand in hand. You might put up with a lot in life, and you're very patient with people and with your lot in life. And that goes along with a form of suffering, and it does strengthen and mature the Christian person and be more equipped for other things in the future when they challenge us and try to give us 
an impatient spirit rather than a patient one. It is a virtue. It's something we should have in our lives growing constantly. So folks, this Christmas time and forever, I hope we're patient people. You find yourself in a queue. You find yourself in some place where, oh, I couldn't be bothered with this, and you're losing your teller. Just remember this little word from James about patience. It's important to have it. And that's for us all, each and every one, that we grow in the Lord in patience. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for patience. It's a gift that doesn't come easily to many of us. And some of us have longer lengths of rope than others before we come to the end of our patience. And Lord, some things annoy us quicker than maybe somebody beside us has a different at length of time before they'd be annoyed with the same thing. Father, we're all built differently, and we just ask that you will come into our lives afresh today to teach us the, the beauty of patience, and Father, that it is a virtue, that it is something that is part of who you are, and that you want to have into our lives as well as we grow and develop in you. So help us to be strengthened with patience today. When the challenges come to us, that we may throw it out the window and forget about it. And Father, help us particularly to be patient in our lives and yet excited and wanting your return to come back and to take your children home. But to be patient in our service and awaiting your return this Advent time and forevermore. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. We now stand to sing, O come, all ye faithful. standing as we affirm our faith in the words of the creed and you find it's in question and answer form today. 
Do you believe and trust in God the Father, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed the world? Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God? This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Please be seated. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this Advent season. And as we gather as your body, your children, this morning the church, we thank you, Father, for your presence with us. And Lord, we pray that you guide and lead us in your service, that as we're empowered and filled with your Spirit, we go out to serve you daily in our lives. And Father, in this Advent season, we look forward to the coming of the Christ child in a manger. And Lord, we give thanks for the promise of your return, the other side of Advent, when you will come back, not as a baby, but as the Savior, Majesty, Almighty Creator God, in all your glory and splendor and judgment. And I pray, Lord, that we are ready for that day. Your word teaches us that no one knows the hour or the day of your return. But help us to be ready. Help us to have hearts that are desiring that day, knowing that we're standing strong in you and we've nothing to fear on that day when we trust in you. But Lord, help us also to be patient in service patient for your return, looking to draw others into your kingdom that they too are ready for your return. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray for our world today, and we continue to pray that your gospel goes forth into the world to draw others into your kingdom. The Lord, Many are found to be in your kingdom before your return throughout the lands and peoples of this globe. Today we pray for those in need. And as we sit down to Christmas dinner and all the festivities and presents and all of that sort of stuff, Lord, we remember those who are without, those who starve from day to day, those who thirst. Father, those who will have no family. Those who will be homeless. Those who are living in places where there's persecution and civil unrest and war. Father, we pray for those in need that they may know the abundance of your love and your provision both now and every day, and help us out of our abundance to give to others in need. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we pray today for our families. On this family service, we give thanks for the family unit, as you have ordained it to be. We thank you, Father, for dads, and mums. We thank you for children, for brothers, for sisters, for our grandas and grands, for wider family circle and all our friends. We give thanks, Father, for each person's role within the family unit, and we pray that families continue to live by biblical principles. And Lord, we, bless, we ask for your blessing on every home in the parish and everyone connected to St. Andrews. And Lord, we remember those who are without family, those who find family life difficult, those who don't see loved ones very often. And Lord, we ask for your strength, peace, and your presence with them. 
And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And Lord, we pray today for those who are not well, those who we know and love particularly, those in hospital, those cared for at home or in nursing care. We pray for your healing, your comfort and peace and strength with them. And those who seek to bring healing to them, guide and lead them in their endeavors. And continue to remember those who grieve at this time in the loss of a loved one. May they know your peace, comfort, and strength. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And let us pray together the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And we stand to sing our final carol, Silent Night. be seated. Let's pray together. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us this day and forevermore. Amen. God bless, folks. Hope to all see you soon. Thank you.